Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number six, which is the final question from this S1 statistics paper from January 2021 from the International A Level LXL board. This question is, starts off with a um, a disc of radius one centimeter is rolled onto a horizontal grid of rectangles so that the disc is equally likely to land anywhere on the grid. Each rectangle is five centimeters long and three centimeters wide. There are no gaps between the rectangles and the grid is sufficiently large so that no discs roll off the grid. If the disc lands inside a rectangle without covering any part of the edges of the rectangle, then a prize is won. By considering the possible positions for the center of the disc, we got to show that the probability of winning a prize on any particular roll is one fifth. Okay, so here we have a situation that seems a bit kind of like strange, but we could make a little sketch and I think things will become clear. So we got to have a, we're going to have a rectangle, okay, which is five by three. So I'm just going to make a sketch, just say that's five by three. Okay, just a little sketch. Now, just imagine you have a circle of radius one centimeter. Okay, of radius one centimeter. Now, let's try and make that a bit smaller. Okay, just say that's radius one centimeter. Okay, I'm going to um, make a mark here for the center of the circle. Just say this is the center of the circle. Okay, this is pointing to the center of the circle. Uh, I want to keep this stuck on there so that it doesn't... Let me just do this. Okay. Um, let me group them together. Okay. Now, so basically, if this circle lands like that, for example, um, okay, the prize will be lost. Okay, because it's covering the edges of the rectangle. So the circle has to land somewhere in the area around here. Okay, somewhere in the area around here so that the edge doesn't go on the rectangle. Okay, we got to try and figure out what that um, probability of it landing on that area is. Okay, so we have the width of this rectangle. Okay, we have the width of this rectangle is five. Um, well, the length is five and the width is three. Okay, so this is five centimeters, and this is three centimeters. If you think about where this rectangle, where this circle can land, now this is the limit to where it can land. Okay, if it lands, you know, further than this, okay, in this direction, upwards, it's going to be um, basically going out of our. It's going to cover the this the line, so it can't get any closer. Then this point here, so I'll mark this point again. It can't get any point closer to this point to the edge. All right. And there'll be a line going along here, which will be the same distance away. It's like it's half the radius. It's half the radius. So that's going to be 0 0.5 centimeters this way and that way. And also this way and that way. And also in this corner as well. And also in that corner as well. So basically, there's going to be a little rectangle inside here which will define the limits of which it can it can be in. So I'll just put this to make it clearer. So, for example, up to this point, just up to here, it can't get any further than that. That's like the limit of where it can go. Okay, and also down here, if it goes any further than that, it will cover the line. That's like the limit of where it can go from that side as well. And there'll be another point on the other side as well, the same. Okay, so there's like a little rectangle within this rectangle, um, which is where the radius of this can land. Okay, where the center of this, sorry, disc can land. Okay, so if the center of the disc lands um, between inside this region here, inside this region here, then it'll be fine. You'll win the prize. If it lands, if the center lands outside this region here, it's going to overlap with the edge of the rectangle and it won't be you won't win the prize. So there's a little rectangle inside this rectangle, okay, which is going to be like, like this.
Okay, that marks the limit to which the center of the coin or disk can land. Can land anywhere in this region here, and this is like the limit. So if I find the area of of this part here and divide it by the area of the whole thing, then I found the probability that it can land and we can win the price. Okay, so what is the, the, the dimensions of this? Well, we know that this is um, the radius of this is one. The radius is one. Okay, so if the radius of this is one, okay, if the radius of this is one, okay, so that means this distance is one, and that means this distance is also one. And it means this distance is 1, and this distance is also 1. Okay, so we, we got like all these distances as 1. So basically this is going to be a 1 on this side and a 1 on that side taken away from 5. So it's 5 minus 2, which is 3 centimeters. And this is 3, and there's 1 on this side and 1 on this side. So it's 3 minus 2, which is 1 centimeter. So the area of the, the, the part of the area that it can land on is a rectangle of... 1 times 3, so the probability of winning is going to be 1 times 3 over the area of the whole, um, you know, rectangle, which is going to be um, 3 times 5. So 1 times 3 over 3 times 5, and you see we, we get 1 fifth. Okay, so that's the probability of it landing in any one of these rectangles in an area where it won't overlap with the edge of the rectangle. Okay, it won't cross the edge of the rectangle. Okay, so that's part A done. So you have to think a bit about geometric kind of way of just imagining it. Making a little sketch does help. Okay, now part B, it says a group of 15 students each roll the disc onto a grid 20 times and record the number of times X that each student wins a prize. Their results are summarized as follows. Find the standard deviation of the number of prizes won. Now the standard deviation is the square root of the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Okay, the mean of the squares is going to be the sum of x squared divided by 295, sorry, divided by the number minus the square of the mean, which is going to be the sum of x divided by the number, but that's going to be squared. That's the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Okay, and that is the variation. So the standard deviation, which is given the symbol sigma, is equal to the square root of all of that. So we're going to have the square root of, we're going to have 295 over the number of students, which is 15. That's the number of attempts. So 15 minus 61 over 15 squared. And that will give you the standard deviation of the number of prizes, one per student. So let's just do that. So we have the square root of 295 divided by 15 minus, I'm going to have um, a bracket fraction 61 over 15, close the bracket and square that. Okay, that should give us the standard deviation, which is 1.7, 1.7. 7688 1.76886 it continues on like that so I'm going to write around it to 3SF 1.77 that's the standard deviation or sigma you could say of um, the number of prizes won per student okay so that's answer to part B then part C it says a second group of 12 students each roll the dice onto the grid 20 times and the mean number of prizes won per student is 3.5 with a standard deviation of 2. Find the mean and standard deviation of the number of prizes won per student for the whole group of 27 students. Okay, so now I'm going to bring some of the information from the last part of the question. Okay, so the, the second group of students, the first group of, of students, which we just looked at in the previous part of the question, this was the data that we had. There was 15 of them. That was their sum of their scores. That was the sum of the squares of their scores. The second group of students, they told us, 
that the uh, mean is for the second group there's 12 and the mean value for the second group is equal to 3.5 and the standard deviation of the second group is 2 okay so let's try and figure out first of all the mean of the whole group of students for all of them okay so the mean is a total sum of all the scores which is going to be um, 61 from the first group plus and you're going to have 12 uh, students and the mean is 3.5 so the total of that when you when you took the total divided by 12 you got 3.5 so if you have the the sum of all the scores divided by 12 gave you 3.5 then the sum must be 12 times 3.5 that's the total sum of all of the two groups scores okay uh, the number of times they won prizes divided by the total number of students altogether which is 27 that will give you the new mean this is the the new mean okay so we can take um, 61 61 plus 12 times 3.5 and divide that by the total number of students now which is 27 and that gives us the new mean which is 3.814 Eight three point three point eight one four eight dot 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 eight one four eight yeah which gives you three point eight one to three SF. They didn't tell us how to round it, so we should round it to three SF. So three point eight one. That's the new mean. Now we've got to find the new standard deviation. Now remember the standard deviation is the square root of the square root of the sum the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean okay so we know that the new mean is given by this um, which is 103 over oh, I should write it this way 103 over 27 okay so the new mean is 103 over 27 so I know I'm gonna to have to minus the square of this from the sum of the squares now my objective is to find out what is the sum of the squares of these students so I know that let's work out from the beginning of what they've told us they've told us that for the 12 for the 12 students for the 12 students when n equals 12 the standard deviation of the second group is equal to uh, 2 okay so let's look at what that means that means that the square root of the sum of the squares of the second group of students which is what I need to find the standard deviation I need to have that to help me find the total sum of the squares the sum of the squares of the second group of students divided by the number of students okay which is 12 minus the square of the mean and we know the mean of the second group of students was um, 2 sorry 3.5 so you're gonna have minus 3.5 squared that's equal to the standard deviation which is 2 so if I square both sides I'll have the the sum of the squares of the second group over 12 minus 3.5 squared which gives me 49 over 4 is equal to 4 I need some more space hold on a second Okay, so now what I can do is I can solve this for the sum of the second lot of students squared over 12 is going to be 4, which is like 16 over 4, plus 49 over 4. So I'm going to have the sum of the second group squared over 12 is going to be 16 plus 49, that's 49, that's 59, that's 65 over 4. So the sum of the second group of students squared is going to be 12 times 65 over 4, which is 3 times 65, which is 180, 195. Okay, just make sure of that. I've got um, 4 plus 49 over 4, okay, times 12 uh, equals, and then times 12. That gives me 195. So I know that the sum of the squares of the second group of the students is 195 therefore the sum of the squares of the the total group of all of them is 195 plus the original sum of the squares of the original lot which was 
as 295. Okay, so that is the new sum of the squares of, of everything. So you, you add to this 295, and that gives you 490. So I can say for the, the new standard deviation is going to be the sum of the new x squares over the new number, which is 27, minus the square of the mean, and the new mean was, as we found out, 103 over 27. So over 103 over 27 squared. So this actually here, the new thing is 490. I already worked that out. So this is going to be 490 over 27 minus 103 squared over 27. And all of that square rooted, that will be the new standard deviation. So let's just do that. We've got the square root of, we're going to have 490 divided by 27 minus, you're going to have bracket 103 over 27, close that bracket and square it. And that will give you 1.896. So 1.896, whatever. So that's going to give me 1.90 to 3SF. So that's the new standard deviation. And the new mean was up here, which is 3.81, 103 over 27. Okay, so we've found the answer to that question, part C. And now on to part D, if there's a part D. Yes, there is. It says the 27 students also recorded the number of times that the disc covered a corner of a rectangle and estimated the probability to be 0 0.2216 to four decimal places. Explain how this probability could be used for, to find an estimate for the value of pi and state the value of the estimate. Okay, a bit of a thinking question here, I see. Okay, so for part and D, it says, the 27 students also recorded the number of times that the disc covered a corner of the rectangle or the corner of a rectangle and estimated the probability to be 0 0.2216 to four decimal places. Explain how this probability could be used to find an estimate for the value of pi and state the value of your estimate. Now, it sounds like a very strange question, as I mentioned. Now, let's just try and get this sorted out. So you have your rectangle. The rectangle is five by three. Five by three. Now, you have your disc, which is a circle. a bit thinner okay now basically I'm drawing it a bit big but it doesn't matter let me make it smaller no problem I can make it smaller okay now basically it's saying here that the 27 students also recorded the number of times that the disc covered a corner of a rectangle. Now, it covers the corner of a rectangle when it's like this. Covers it. Okay, and I guess that means when it will cover, it will cover a corner of the rectangle when a quarter of the circle is in the rectangle. And when the radius is right on that, on that corner there. So this is a quarter of the circle. And you'll have a quarter of the circle here, and a quarter there, and a quarter there, and a quarter there. Four quarters, which is one. So it's like the, the you know, it's going to like be like this, and like this, and like this, and like this on that side as well. Okay, the corner. So those four corners there that we can see, that's where the disc has to land, such that the corner is covered. So all four corners there make like four quarters of a circle. So the area of that circle is pi times r squared, and r is equal to one, so it's pi times one squared. And the area of the whole thing, 
So the probability that it lands on the corners, covering the corners, is going to be the area of um, those four corners together, which is pi, over the area of the whole board or the whole rectangle, which is 15, 5 times 3. So that is a probability, okay, um, of it covering the corners. And they've said here that they have um, recorded the number of times that the disk covered a corner of the rectangle and estimated the probability to be this. So we can use this experimental probability and this theoretical probability and we could say, let's say that they're equal to each other. So pi over 15 would be equal to 0 0.2216. Okay, so we can kind of use this as a way. It's, it's not going to be exactly equal, but we can say that this might give us an estimate of what pi is in. Okay, if we didn't know what pi was. We didn't know the value of pi. We just knew that pi, the, the area of the circle is pi r squared. And we knew that basically... Um, you know, the probability of it covering the four corners is pi over 15, and the experimental probability of it covering the four corners is 0 0.2216. So this would give us an approximate value for pi. If we didn't know what pi was, it, would be, it could be a way to work out a possible value of pi using the, the experimental probability. So you do 15 times, 15 times, 0 0.2216 and that gives us 3.324 3.324 and there's the answer to that question that's an estimate um, for the value of pi so explain how this probability could be used to find an estimate so I didn't really explain did I I have to maybe write something here because this is explain so we could say that the um, the, you could say the, th the theoretical probability is pi over 15. The experimental probability, what they, they found from the, doing the experiments, and they actually threw the coins, or threw the disk, is equal to 0 0.2216. Okay? So, therefore, we could say that pi over 15 is equal to 0 0.2216. We could say it's approximately equal to that, okay? Because they, you know, we, we assume they'll give us something close to each other. So, this could be a possible value of pi. I think that's enough for you to show uh, an explanation. So, there's the end of question number six. That's a bit of a, a strange type of ending to this paper. But there we have it, the end of this paper. There were six questions on this paper, and it's done now. We've completed the whole thing. All the other questions you'll find in this playlist, which um, is linked in this area over here. And what is linked in this area over here will be... Now, this is a bit of a strange one. I think I'll put uh, it in, you know, the general averages um, section and also in probability. It's got to do with both of them. So I'll put two playlists, one with the, the averages and the other one with probability and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle of the page here and on the top of the page you can find another p uh, sorry s1 pass paper that you might want to watch okay thank you for watching i hope that was clear and i hope to see you soon